Hello everyone, in this video I will be talking about a project called handwriting digit recognition. So the digits from 0 to 9 will be there and it would be handwritten and I would try to recognize that by using CNN which is convolutional neural network. So we would understand how we uh, in the last video we understood how CNN works in detail and so let us just jump into our code for that and so there is a MNIST dataset which contains 60,000 training images of handwritten digits and 10,000 testing images of handwritten digits so we import tensorflow and inside tensorflow there is a module called keras and inside keras there are data sets and one of those data set is this MNIST data set. We could have also impl imported this from the scikit-learn library. So using MNIST.load data, it is a data loader which gives the data in this format which can, using which we can directly save the data. So x train comma y train and x test comma y test format, the data is loaded. Now we are normalizing the values of x train and y train such that each of our pixel would lie between 0 to 1. You know that they normally lie between 0 to 255 and if we divide each of them by 255 we would have we would be left with values lying only between 0 to 1. Now we have y train and y tests. We are trying to convert those to categorical values which is also one hot type and conversion. So what is that basically? So if there is a digit 5, it would be stored in the form of 0, 0, 0, 0, 4 zeros and then there will be a 1 and then some more zeros. So we will see that. So uh, we are basically doing one hot encoding of our white test and white end about which we are going to just talk after let's say one or two minutes. So and we also make sure that our shape is same. So we convert so the x train shape we make sure that the x train shape is same and in our process and in our uh, manipulation processes this sh they shouldn't get destroyed so so basically uh, you know that um, maybe the rgb ch uh, uh, channel values may be in the form of bgr or rgb but during our training we need it in the uh, in a proper format so we do that here and so basically we are exchanging the channels over here RG, we are converting bgr to rgb or something like that then we use uh, the len well, uh, thing to just len function to just find how many train and test values are there as i told you there will be 60000 training images and 10000 testing images but if we do the shape option we find that uh, there are 60,000 images and each image so you know that images is a 3d 3d matrix so a list of images would be basically a 4d matrix and and you can see the last dimension is one so it is a grayscale image so it's basically each image is only 20 cross 28 cross 28 which makes a total of 784 pixels so what we are going to do we are use we are going to use each of the pixel as the input layer of our image so we try to plot using matplotlib so we try to show what the first value x train looks like so it is the digit 5 you can see it is plotted here and the y train of 0 should be 5 so you can see that it is in one hot encoded form that means the categorically encoded so this is 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 the fifth value is 1 so it means that the output is 5 if the 6th value would have been 1, so no, the 6th value is 5, 1, so it means the output is 5. So it starts from 0 all the way till 9, right? So if the 7th value would have been 1, so you would have found that the our digit is 6. So in this way, we do one not encoding. And, and in, the, in our final output layer of the neural network, you will find only 10 neurons, which would give outputs of either 0 or 1 and 
the final uh, the whatever the output they will give only one of them will be one and we would basically fi find out which exactly is our predicted number so now we create the convolutional neural network so we have we basically create an object model from so from tensorflow and we go inside tensorflow there is a model keras inside keras there is there are models and we basically say that go ahead and give me a sequential model so from tensorflow and keras we select a sequential model which and inside that sequential models this is the architecture which i want so let's say we select a convolutional network so it 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 would learn 32 filters using a 3 cross 3 kernel it is a it is the meaning of that and you already know what convolution means and we you will use the activation function of relu and the input shape of the image we have to specify here which is 28 cross 28 cross 1 and the max pooling layer which would use a 2 cross 2 pool size we would also use a max pooling layer we would also flatten our units after that then we would feed to the, our, our actual neural network which is a fully connected network dense network so give me a dense network means give me a fully connected dense network with 128 neurons in that so we have a hidden layer with the 128 neurons and whose activation function is also really and we have a dropout layer which with probability with key probability of 0 0.5 this is known as key probability you already know that drop a dropout layer function is that it randomly deletes half half if the probability is half then it randomly deletes half of the values so it would just uh, delete half of the values in different epochs so as to make sure that we don't rely heavily on any of the neuron so this is a regularization parameter you can say that to prevent overfitting of our model we add also add an output layer so as i explained you the output layer uh, would be something like this it would be a 10 cross 1 array so yeah the output layers will, will have 10 neurons in that and whose activation function is softmax as you know that softmax activation function gives us the probability so we can find the probability of each of the classes being true so the probability uh, the class with the highest probability will be our output so here we have an output layer and with output units for all the 10 digits so we create a convolutional neural network with this and we finally train our neural network we are using an adam optimizer as i explained you in my videos previous videos that adam optimizer is an optimizer which uses a lot of a lot of other uh, uh, other algorithms like uh, it uses the uh, concept of stochastic gradient descent and the learning rate will be adaptive learning rate and basically uh, uh, there is a formula for that so it just uses that uh, IDAM optimizer and this we use a loss function as the categorical cross entropy loss and we want to see what is the accuracy so our matrix is the accuracy then we fit our model we fit generally fit the x train and y train values and we specify the number of epochs to be 10 so yeah we train it through 10 epochs and we find that our accuracy keeps on increasing all the way till 99.16 percent accurate it is on our 10th epoch so you can ask a question that if it is training on what it is actually calculating the accuracy if it is training while it is learning right so why we need the accuracy so there is also a separate portion inside the training data we separate out a portion we name it as validation set and on the validation set we calculate this accuracy so yeah so uh, we will uh, so this this is to make sure that as we proceed through the epochs we should actually get increasing accuracy so our model is improving so actually we are doing correct and on evaluation of the model so 99.16 percent accurate looks like to be a overfitted model but if you see that if we even evaluate them uh, in the test values the x test and the y test values with verbose equals to 2 so we get that 
the our loss is this and accuracy is this so yeah in a, in one of my previous video of bank node detection i have already explained you of how to train not general neural networks so training and testing neural networks and the parameters the functions we use here are all the same just with the designing of the uh, convolutional neural network architecture is a bit different it uses convolutional layer it uses pooling layers it must use a dropout layer also for regularization purpose and the rest of the things are mostly the same and yeah so yeah there we go uh, our handwriting digit recognition that, uh, that we have worked on our data set of handwriting digit recognition so yeah that's all from this video so thanks a lot